What is something you regret spending a lot of money on? So, I bought a Campbell at an auction one time. He was expensive, but the damage he did around the farm was worse. Destructive, stinky creatures. But they're so weird, you just have to love them. Looking back, I probably should have spent my money on literally anything else. I've spent so much money on board games, I should play. Cosmetologist. Procedures and creams was not helping with my acne. Charged me so much and my acne got worse than before I came to her. Went to the dermatologist, got relatively cheap prescription medicine, works wonders. I was spending so much on expensive creams that didn't work. Then the pandemic came, I stopped wearing makeup regularly, and I switched to CeraVe face wash and creams. My skin has never been clearer. They do like six week course and spout all this crap about how the skin produces so much oil because we're not moisturizing. Never trust someone with a white coat and no qualification. My dermatologist told me to use only chemist branded skincare and that oil production was genetic and hormonal and people with oily skin do not need moisturizer. Nicotine. Started because I was stressed out of my mind and couldn't travel with my weed vape. Bad idea. Three plus years of regrets. Did it for a few years and quit a few months ago. I didn't realize how shitty smoking made me feel until I stopped. I have to travel for business between Canada and the US a few times per year. I vape weed every day at home in Canada. I could take a break from weed for a week or two while I'm in the US. Good tolerance break. Makes it even better when I come back. But I can't go the whole trip without the nicotine vape. Actually, I can't go two days or that's all I think about. Weed is a tiny bit addictive, but it's nothing compared to nicotine. That just stays with you. And there's a lot of triggers to that addiction. For me, it's work. I could go the whole day without thinking about my nicotine vape when I spend the day out with my kid, for example. I leave it at home. But if it's a working day, I'm hitting that on the first hour and the whole day after that. And there's no high after the first couple of weeks. You're just maintaining the addiction. Nothing more. At least with weed, you could chill and everything feels, sounds, tastes better. I see no negative to vaping weed, only positive. I see only negatives with vaping nicotine, but I'm stuck with it for now. My wedding. I'm not a very social person, so basically it was a $20,000 silent panic attack surrounded by 120 people, half of whom I don't even know. If I could go back in time with this knowledge, I'd do a $20,000 elopement and travel together for a few months or something. Drugs. I spent thousands of dollars over the 10 years of active addiction. I not only paid with cash, but also paid with my life, health, relationships, and more. Totally not worth it at all. Coming up on three years clean and sober. Clothes for special occasions. Why do we do this? I just spent money on a new outfit to wear to my daughter's orchestra concert. She's in fifth grade. Dressing nice also improves your self-confidence. I'm not saying you need to throw on a suit, but it takes all of two minutes to change from sweats and casual wear to nice looking clothes. It really doesn't matter, but I've noticed I feel less bad about myself when I do it. Attend two weddings in a single month. First wedding was casual, so I went with jeans, brown leather shoes, a dark gray shirt, and gray brown vest. Second wedding, I was kind of made to buy a suit by my parents, including having it tailored to my size and all. 600 pounds for a suit that I'll most likely not going to wear again because it doesn't fit anymore. 600 I paid of my own money because I know if I didn't, I'd get a lot of from my parents and a lot of other relatives. But the vest? I like that vest. It was 40 pounds and with the right jacket and maybe a bow or necktie, I think it would look better on me than that goddamn suit and be more comfortable and warm. Froze like hell on that wedding because it was cold. Christmas presents for my high school girlfriend only to find out she had been multiple dudes while we were together. You are bad, Emily. Going out for dinner so much. I get into modes where I eat out almost all the time. Then I realize I spent $1,000 or more in less than a week on dining out. Cigarettes. It's not a lot of money, but sitting here thinking about you're literally buying poison and killing yourself. Honestly, my wife's engagement ring. I spent a pretty penny on it despite her begging me to go cheaper on our entire relationship. I know she loves it anyway, but the money could have been better spent towards our wedding or our house. My brother-in-law spent over 10 grand on the ring for his second wife, and he wasn't rich either. She flaunted that ring like crazy and scoffed at me when I was a plain thin band that cost $100 for my wedding ring. Yeah, they were married for like two years before an ugly divorce. She kept the ring but slaughtered my brother-in-law's reputation, although to be fair, he kind of deserved it. 
I've been married for 11 years and have regretted my small plain ring. I'm still sad with it. Marlboro. I quit when I was still $5 a pack and I still spent way too much on it. It's over $12 now. I don't understand how anyone's still smoking. Baseball cards from the late 80s, early 90s. My ex. I paid for a trip to Hawaii. He dumped me two weeks after we got back. He'd been planning the breakup for months. Same. We dated for about six months and I spent close to $20,000 on dinners, trips, presents in that time. Helped out an ex who was racking up awful amounts of credit card debt. Never again. When we broke up, I realized I had gone from a very strong financial position to being horribly in debt myself, despite my salary increasing dramatically over the course of the relationship. Debt free now, but man, I could have bought a house from the amount of money I forked out constantly to save her from her own bad decisions. Love makes you stupid. God, I spent so much money on my college boyfriend, who was my first boyfriend. He was really into Warhammer 40k, and I bought him tons of expansive minis, helped fund him building his own PC, paid for most of our dates and takeout, etc. I blew tons of money on this dude for four years, who was actually a total asshole to me, and I just didn't know any better. A wedding. Definitely this. My wife and I initially planned our wedding in May of 2020, but that quickly got shot down because of the COVID-19 pandemic, so we put our plans on hold for the time being. We eventually got married in September of 2021 during a time when COVID numbers in my community were relatively low and restrictions were at a point where it was safe to gather in small numbers. My parents wanted my wife and I to spend a boatload of money on a huge extravagant wedding with family coming in from out of town and the whole nine yards. We instead wanted a small backyard wedding with immediate family, masks, and social distancing. My wife's parents also suggested the idea of a potluck since our guest numbers would be so low in comparison to our initial wedding plans. Trying to explain this to my parents was like talking to a brick wall. They called our wedding plans a farce and thought it was a joke. At one point, I told them they didn't have to come if they didn't like our plans. It was hard for me to say that, but I also felt it was necessary if they were going to be rude and so blatantly disrespectful. They did end up coming and enjoying themselves on our wedding day. Where I live, the average wedding costs $30,000. Why drop that insane amount of money on a wedding when you can have a small intimate ceremony and use the money you save to go on a honeymoon you'll remember for a lifetime? Our initial wedding plans included catering and invitations for family to come in from out of town. We had to change the plans because of the pandemic and local COVID restrictions. Collecting merch items. You'd think you'd never lose interest in something and boom, from one week to another, you don't care anymore and have hundreds down the drain of items you don't even like and just bought for the sake of your collection. Often the value even goes down or you get scammed buying rare items off someone. Drugs. I'm 40 and battled addiction my whole life. Doing the best I've ever done now, almost five years, no noodles, only a CPL bumps in my road to recovery. If I've had back half the money spent directly on drugs or indirectly like binding out of jail, lawyer fees, fines, restitution, not to mention the stupid purchases while intoxicated, I'd be really well off. But the best lessons are the bought ones and my life now is great compared to my old life. And if anyone is battling addiction or other mental issues, keep fighting and don't let a mishap define you. A master's degree. It was a fun two years, but I'll be in debt for seven and would make the same salary without it. Marijuana. I have the value of a couple of cars in my lungs, which isn't very useful. A wedding. My wife and I are still together and we're great, but the wedding was a ridiculous cost that I wish we could have kept more of. An expensive diamond ring, this is a trend I'd like to see die out completely as it was the diamond company who conceived the entire thing to begin with. Courses on how to make money. Makeup. Any makeup I bought between June 2019 and April 2020. This one hits. I have a drawer full of it and I don't even wear it anymore. Can't toss it because I spent too much. Can't sell it because no one wants it. Need to find a shelter program I could donate to. Friends. Was making great money in my early 20s and thought it was a great idea to treat my friends. Tons of money. Now I can't even remember their names. The ones I do remember I haven't spoken to in decades. Wish I'd saved that money. This is a weird thing to regret. I spend lots of money hosting parties for my friends, largely because I'm lonely otherwise. None of them make in a particular effort to make sure it all ends up totally even, but nobody is trying to screw me over or take advantage. If I never spoke to any of them again, it wouldn't take away the happy memories of laughing around my dining room table. Most of the crap that my compulsive shopping, ADHD, collected, driven ass has randomly bought over the years. My house. 
it seems like every day I'm finding something or another that is bad. I've owned it for three years, replaced part of the sewer line in the basement due to it rusting out and leaking, reinforced one of the basement walls as it was pushing inwards. $15,000 for this fix and it still leaks, but it does seem like it stopped moving. My upstairs needs refinished, no HVAC on the second floor, and ND during the winter is horrible. The kitchen and bathroom need complete remodels, the fence in my yard needs replacing, and I need new retaining walls. Some words of advice from my experience of those looking to buy a house. 1. Have a reputable home inspector perform an inspection beforehand. I missed a lot of the issues I'm now encountering, which seem like that would have been easy finds for him. 2. Avoid shopping if there is snow on the ground. Try in the spring when everything is melting and there is a lot of groundwater, especially if the house has a basement. 3. Bring a friend or family member, someone who has no investment in the purchase. Have them check any and everything out. They will more than likely find something you aren't seeing through all of your excitement and stress over buying a house. Bonus suggestions. Look behind all of your vents and make sure they're actually attached to the port. Jiggle the power outlets. You might find that some of them aren't actually properly installed in the wall and slide out. Open and close every window fully. Nothing like trying to open a window during nice weather to find out the handle won't actually turn and open. My truck. I paid $1,200 for it dumped about $4,000 into it and now it's worth about $900. A pair of shoes that I really never wear because they hurt my feet. I feel this shit. A 1996 Corvette I bought in 2016. Well, I dumped way too much money into it, and it still needs more work. It did have that, and it actually didn't give me any problems until I lightly sprayed the engine with water. Then it wouldn't start for a few hours. Let it sit overnight, and it started the next day and didn't give me any more issues. I sold the car like a year after I bought it and upgraded to a Camaro SS. And then sold that earlier this year. I almost grabbed a pristine 2002 WS6 with 30,000 miles on it, but it had a really heavy clutch and I was having some knee pain issues in my clutch legs, so I had to pass. On one of those casino ships, I watched a guy walk up to a roulette table, put down $400 and lose all of it on the first spin. The guy looked 20 years old and definitely looked like $400 was a huge amount of money for him. He sat in the corner for the rest of the three hours we were on the water. Fast food, overly expensive, usually unhealthy, and never very filling. Fast food is no longer fast or cheap. McDonald's had a sign, McRib Farewell Tour. As we drove by, I looked at my wife and gestured, damn, you want a McRib? She agreed, and we stood in line about all the nostalgia of Mickey D's and kids meals, etc. We hadn't been in forever. I cook often. Damn, dude, we opened that box of sandwich to what could have been described as a pork trough diarrhea on a bun with a pickle. You could taste the meat glue. The fries were cold, but to their credit, they swapped them for fresh. But yeah, I know it's fast and cheap, but this sandwich was just nasty. Well, apart from a $100,000 student loan to study art, I'm a compulsive overeater, and when I binge, I will eat about $20 a day every day until I'm too fat, and then I lose all the weight again. Rinse and repeat. I'd say a binge will last four to six months every day. So around $25,000 to $5,000 in junk food per binge. No good comes of it. Medical bill. I have chronic pain and all the doctors know how to do a trial and error. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on medical treatments that haven't worked. And I'm still in pain a decade later. I especially feel guilty now that I have kids. Honestly, just random junk. I inherited about $350,000 from my dad back in 2008. My wife and I went around house shopping. The intention was to pay cash for a house and cash for a car. We did pay cash for a car. But the last time we found a house we liked, we only had $30,000 left, which was just enough to make the down payment and buy down points on the interest rate. Funny thing is, I don't even remember what I spent all the money on. Just random stupid Imagine DVDs, concert tickets, video games, etc. Gifts for ex-friends that would turn around and treat me badly later. Like, damn, I should have treated myself instead at that point. Nah, you're just kind. Why change yourself for jerks? Although spending that money on yourself isn't a bad idea either. College. I left my career a year after being diagnosed with bipolar 2 and a sleeping disorder. The job was slowly killing me and turned me into an alcoholic. So now I'm living the American dream, working paycheck to paycheck until some cataclysmic health issue or student loan debt wipes me out. My college degree. I raised my whole life believing you needed at least a four-year degree to get anywhere. 
Once I had one, I didn't want it and neither did employers. A few years back, I went to the local community college and got a technical degree that took me one semester and now I have a career using that. Everything I put into socializing as a teen and young adult. I didn't save any money for myself. I invested so much time and money hanging out with random people. I haven't seen 99% of my old friends in years. My house. I don't love it. If I could go back in time, I would have stayed in the apartment I loved and not moved out to buy a house for me and my ex-boyfriend that I'm now stuck living in alone for 15 years. Modifying my gown. I bought a gown with a cathedral length train. I wanted a train, but not that big of a train. The consultant at the shop said it was no big deal to shorten the train, except shortening the train cost twice as much as hemming the front, and no one told me that until I was getting pinned up for alterations. I paid something like $300 to hem the front and $600 to take back the train. It was nuts. I would have just kept looking for a gown with a shorter train if I'd known that. Yes, dresses can be modified to better suit your tastes, but it can also be really expensive. So watch out for sales consultants saying modifications are no big deal. Education. I have with an excellent education and career, but the amount of money it took to get where I am professionally should be outlawed. Yes, my vote is here. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. Unexpected life changes happened, and I ended up in California where anything I wanted to do in the psychology field needs way more than a bachelor's. I could have used it for some minimum wage mentally taxing jobs, but instead I currently work as an office manager and make around $70,000 a year. Same here. Bachelor's in psychology and I've been working in sales instead of making like 200% more than any job that actually needed a psych degree. So sad that we were told, all you need is a degree, and then the world changed on us. I bought a bunch of software and hardware to venture in some creative projects. Music for YouTube. I barely put in one hour, let alone 10,000 hours, to become decent at something, and I've just let all this expensive equipment sit there collecting dust. I didn't complete one project, but it didn't get the response I was hoping for, so I just kind of gave up. I wish I knew I was going to quit before I got started. Smack my head at me. But once in fourth grade, I excitedly bought a fake set of plastic nails you could glue to your nails with stickers with various glitter and stuff to decorate on the school trip to the Christmas market. It was cheap, but it seemed too expensive for me considering the money I was usually given at that age. And after returning back to school, I felt very guilty and really heavily regretted I blew so much money on such BS. I was so guilt-ridden that I even asked the teacher to leave it with her for now that I'm scared to show it at home. For no reason at all, I was supposed to buy anything for myself for Christmas, and she offered to buy me out of it and bought it from me saying she's going to give it to her daughter. A few days later, surprise, I found it under the Christmas tree from my parents too. What a coincidence. What a luck I got rid of it and don't awkwardly have two same sets now, even though it's the kind of present my parents never even considered to buy to me. Only to realize years and years and years later, that teacher just told my mom and gave it to her and she put it under the tree. New vehicles. Just bought a PS5 just to play Elden Ring. We got it half price for a Black Friday online sale. Keeping my fingers crossed, it was worth it.